Today on circuitbelly.com, I am going to talk about this Keysight Agilent HP 1152A Pro. This is a 2.5 GHz active probe which has really good performance for its price and nowadays you can easily find this probe for relatively low price on internet. I have sourced this probe of eBay. If you try to use this probe with a modern Keysight oscilloscope, you will face some difficulties. There are few limitations with this probe. For example, this probe needs 4 volt input for its working along with plus minus 12 volt supply and not all the oscilloscope implement a fully features auto probe interface. Few of the new generation oscilloscope like the Keysight S series which I have also does not feature 4 volt auto probe interface. It has a fixed 5 volt. I have an old Keysight Infinium which supports voltage detection and it automatically sets the correct voltage needed by the probe. Probes generally need 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts or 6 volts. There is a now expired patent from Keysight. We will also take a look at that. And second problem with this probe, it also does not have a smart probe interface. There is no I2CE prom in there. So what we are going to do here today, we are going to install a EEPROM and a 4 volt voltage regulator in this probe so that it can become compatible with other oscilloscopes as well. So let's get started. First of all, let's so let's take it apart. I found this probe adjustment screwdriver is a plastic thing so it will not scratch anything there and let's do it on camera it appears that plastic has bonded together with age if you take a look you can see the pins are moving now and I should be able to push them you can see you have to push them and then push a little bit backwards and it should open like that you watch carefully there are only two parts which you need to take care this plastic piece it has two springs holding it so we have to take care that those springs don't fly out and these are the also two there are also two clips which you need to slowly lift it off and these clips will also fall apart. You can push them, I believe they will also maybe bonded with the time with the plastic. Let's try a little bit. You have to push it right here on these clips a little bit. It appears to also be a little bit welded. You can see degraded plastic there. So let's do it. And when such all take apart, it will look like something look like that. So these are the clips which are holding it. One, two, three, and four. And this is how we have it. So this is how it looks. In there and if we remove this plastic part these are the two springs which I was talking about these two little springs they can quite often get loose so this is the interface through which it gets power and signal get transmitted here. This interface does not have any ground connection. Ground is only this and there is no other ground in the board. So let's take apart this cable. This is how it looks. And you can lift off this board like this. backwards and that's how you get it out so this is the board here's a closer look at the PCB these pogo pins they connect onto the back of the PCB and get inserted here two pins on this side 
they are positive and negative 12 volt supply and on this side they are plus 5 and they are here probe expect to be minus 4 and plus 4 minus 4 is not used in this probe so only plus 4 is connected and this supply gets forwarded here on this trace the modification which we are going to make on this probe is going to be totally reversible this we are going to modify three things this register we are going to change this is the probe ID register and this register we are going to change this is the voltage register currently this value is set for the 4 volt input and we will be changing it to 10k so that the probe notifies the scope that it expect 5 volt as an input the third modification which we are going to make is going to be this ferret bead as I have said earlier the modifications which we are making to this probe the patch which we are installing it's completely reversible so I will not be making any permanent damage or my permanent changes to this board so as our regulator patch gets installed over here this regulator output need to be flipped and connected to this capacitor right here because it is the 4 volt trace the problem is this trace is connected to the connector with this trace and this farad bead so so if you have this driving this pin you cannot have it connected to the main input line and removing this farad bead will remove it will remove the trace from connecting to the connector itself so it is very very important to remove this farad bead in order this board to function but you can also do optionally you can install this ferret bead by removing from here to here and this way you will never have the both of the things at the same time yeah. so remember change this register remove this ferret bead to disconnect the power supply and change this register as well this register will set the probe ID to be used I square CE prom and this will set it to 5 volt input and removing this farad bead is very very important this is the PCB what we are going to use let's take a closer look at it it has a EEPROM which will enable the smart probe interface a I square C interface and there is a 4 volt regulator really small from Texas instrument and it has really high PSSR so it's going to work really well in the probe and the 4 volt is at outputted here 5 volts come in here regulated and get outputted on this clock pin and data pin of I square C line get connects here this PCB is a flexible PCB on the back there is a small piece which provides some rigidity so that where components are it's going to be little rigid the probe fits perfectly onto the pins you can see and now you can solder them what else you need to solder as I have told earlier the probe interface does not have any ground the ground connections come from here and this is the pad where we will be soldering the ground like this and you're supposed to solder only one two three pins and solder ground here and this little piece which is hanging there it's supposed to be folded like this and soldered one more time ground there what it will do when this patch is installed in the probe as I will show you this probe body is uh, internally has metal on it so this metal is grounded I didn't want these components to short with anything so I have put intentionally put this flap and this flap, flap is folded like this and soldered in place and it will protect it will prevent us from shorting these components anywhere else what you can also do you can put some mylar tape on it I have already installed this patch in another probe and I'll show you this is how it looks so after soldering I have put some mylar tape on it on the bottom after soldering I have soldered clock and data line and flap plus 5 volt line and ground is also solder this thing will be flipped will also be soldered and plus 4 is connected right there ferret bead I have removed I have installed a probe ID register and on the back as well I have installed a 10k register right here so now that we have installed a patch let's take a look how does it go back in so this is the board which we previously installed the flap is also soldered now Okay, this is how it looks. The, I have mounted this 
I have mounted the ferret bead a little sideways just for the sake of this demonstration. Let's see how does it go back. If you look at this body, these pins are sitting way down there. You can never have it. You can never have it back because you have to flex all those pins. Solution to this problem without scratching this metal surface because it's really thin. I have found this SMD tape to be pretty, pretty useful. Uh, what I will do, I will slowly slip this thing down in the between the body and between the body and this pogo pin part. Uh, it's hard to do on the camera. And then I will try to lift it a little bit. This is the way it gets lifted. And you see, without coming apart, it has lifted like this. If you want to take out this assembly completely apart, you have to lift further and pull this way. It's enough for us. And we can put our thing right there. So this is installed like this. And you can just push it backwards. It fits perfectly down there. I have already programmed the EEPROM with 1158A EEPROM dump. So now we can connect the cable and rest of the stuff. Installing is done. We can install back the cable as well. Cable sits exactly the way we have removed it. Like this. Don't forget the plastic part. It still has these springs on it and they go like this this goes this way like this and it sits like this you don't have to do much this is how it sits and this connector connects like this Keysight have designed the enclosure in such a way that you can see this hexagonal nut it exactly fits very appropriately into the prop body so before we close the enclosure we are going to put this we are going to test if everything works and let's get started with the testing we are going to first test with my old infinium oscilloscope see if it gets detected as 1158a probe which we have programmed so we will be using this particular oscilloscope test our patch this is an old HP Infinium oscilloscope 1.5 gigahertz and 8 giga sample per second this particular model it has fully compatible auto prop interface it can automatically adjust the voltage which it supplied to the probe depending on the R set value this particular oscilloscope may not need the patch which we have installed because it can supply all the voltages but still we can use this oscilloscope to test if our patch works and as we have already programmed the EEPROM to be 1158A and once we connect this probe to the oscilloscope it should be detecting as 1.58a and oscilloscope should also output 5 volts let's connect it you can see here 1.158a attached to channel 1 attenuation 10 to 1 probe uncalibrated and let's see if it works I will have a signal from the Composition input It works perfectly fine Let's see if it get detected on other channels Let me enable channel number 2 Let's see if it get detected on channel number 2 as well Detect it perfectly 1158A Channel number 2 you can see the signal as well the trigger point is connected to channel 1 so let's change the trigger to channel 2 and adjust the level and detects perfectly fine works perfectly fine the modification which we made to this probe it's only to the power supply and the probe ID it does not have anything to do with the RF path with the main signal path so it will not affect the signal path in any way as we have installed the regulator to be really high PSSR so it will provide even cleaner power supply to the probe so that's it for this video if you have any questions or comments please drop them down below and you can always visit my blog 
www.circuitvalley.com for more information schematic source file gerbers and images everything else eprom dump is available on my blog and my github page github.com slash circuit valley